Okay, so we have a company here that needs to raise $5 million in funds. Uh, they have a few different options on how they can achieve this through bonds, preferred stock, and common stock. Now, the first plan they have is to issue common stock enough to raise $5 million. Now, keep in mind that in your textbook in this chapter, uh, for these plans, we're assuming that common stock and preferred stock is issued at par. So our first plan is to get the entire five million by issuing common stock. Our second plan says that we're going to issue two million dollars in preferred stock and three million in common. And our final plan will be issuing one million in preferred stock, one million in common stock, and then we are going to sell some bonds to get an additional three million. And you'll notice that all of these will give us the five million that we need. So let's go through plan by plan and see how these are affected. Now the first thing we're always going to start with is our EBIT, our earnings before interest and taxes. Now in this case, let's assume that our EBIT is, uh, let's say something like, mm, that looks good, $900,000. Here we go. So our EBIT will be $900,000. And remember, EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes. So it kind of helps remember that phrase to know what order you're going in because the next thing that we are going to take out is interest. Here, so in plan one, you'll notice that it is entirely common stock. Now, common stock and preferred stock, as you learned in your prior chapters, those don't earn any interest. Uh, so in this case, we are just going to be ignoring interest in this case since we do not have any bonds that we have sold. So we're not accruing any interest for this one. There you go. So our next step is to balance. Just like we did with those liquidation charts, every time we go ahead and do a little something, we are going to get a new balance. So this one will be our earnings before taxes, since we already took out our, our interest. One second, 900,000 minus zero. Now our next step will be to take out taxes. So here we have a 40% tax rate. So we will simply take 900,000 times 40%, which will be 0.4 in decimal form to get our taxes. And that will leave us with our net income. Now that we have our net income, we can start doing that earnings per share calculation that we learned in the prior chapters and readdressed during our last class. So let's take a look here. Do we have any preferred stock in plan one? No, so in this case, we actually do not have any preferred dividends. So at this point, we actually have that entire 540,000 available to preferred shareholders, or sorry, to common shareholders. There's the math, just in case you want to see it. So we can proceed to doing that final part of our EPS calculation and divide it by the total number of common shares outstanding. Now remember that very important rule that I mentioned at the very beginning about how common stock is always issued at par. So to find the number of common shares, we simply are going to take our 5 million in common stock and divide it by the $10 par. So we find that there are five, oh, one second, that didn't come out too correct. One, two, three, four, sorry, one extra zero. Okay, and notice here is this 500,000, is that in dollars? No, that one would actually just be a number. Go ahead like that. There we go. There we go. That one's just going to be a plain number because we're talking about shares in this case, not dollars. Okay. So 
So now we can do our final step, which is to find our earnings per share. Remember our earnings per share calculation is net income, minus preferred dividends, which in this case, that's our available to common shareholders, the 540,000, divided by common shares outstanding. So let's take that 540,000 and divide it by the 500,000 common shares outstanding. And let's get some more decimals in there. There we go. And we find that plan one has an EPS of $1.08. So now let's take a look at that next plan. One second, I'm just going to separate these a bit so they don't confuse too much. Okay, now our next plan, we have the same earnings before interest and taxes of 900000 In this case, we still do not have any debt, so there will be zero interest in this case as well. Our earnings before taxes is always EBIT minus interest, so let's take our 900000 deduct out the zero. Earnings before taxes is still the same. Now we get to do the same with our taxes. We have earnings before taxes of 900000 And we have a tax rate of 40%. So we have the same taxes in plan two as we did in plan one. And now let's find our net income, 900000 minus 360000 that gives us 540,000 net income. Now that we're down to our preferred dividends, you'll see that we actually do have some preferred stock here in plan two, we have two million. Now keep in mind that important formula that we learned back in um, uh, chapter 13, if I remember correctly. So our preferred dividends, those will always equal shares times par times percentage. Now, what we discussed in class was that here, this two million, this is our par and our shares built in. So let's actually go through all of the steps just in case to make sure that everyone understands though. Um, how did we do, uh, let me see, how did we find these common shares outstanding? We took the 5 million in the account and divided it by the par of 10 and we found that we had 500,000 shares of common stock. So let's do the same thing over here. We know that we have, let me see, I'll put it down here. We know that we have 2 million shares and that we have a $100 par, so we actually have 20,000 shares. Now our par is 100, and our percentage is 2%. So if we multiply those across, we find that the dividends is 40,000. So that's the long way of doing it. However, since they give us this percentage right here, and we're making the assumption that all shares are issued at par, what we can do is just take the 2% and multiply it by the 2 million that is sitting in plan two. And that will give you your 40,000 as well. So you can do it the long way if you want to make sure that you really remember that formula that we learned in the prior chapters, or you can simply take the 2% and multiply it by the plan. Now keep in mind, if this is a dollar amount, that is saying how much they are getting per share. So it might be good to understand this formula anyway. Okay, so now that we have our preferred dividends, 2% times the 2 million in the account, we can find our available earnings for common shareholders, 540,000 minus 40,000, and that gives us 500,000 available to common shareholders. Now let's do the same process. Will our common shares still be 500,000? No, because we don't have 5 million in plan, one, in plan two. We only have 3 million here in plan two. So let's take our 3 million and divide it by the $10 par. We find that we have 300,000 common shares. And last but not least, let's divide to find our earnings per share, $1.67. So our earnings per share actually went up between plan one and plan two. Now last but not least, plan three, let's grab our same earnings before interest and taxes. 
Now in this case, we finally do get to calculate some interest because we have some bonds. Now keep in mind, what is our interest formula? Principal times rate times time. Now our principal is the amount in plan three. So there's three million in bonds in plan three. Now our rate is the 12%. And in this case, this is for an entire year. So our time is one. So we don't even have to put that into our formula. So we have $360,000 in interest. Now for earnings before taxes, let's take our 900,000 and deduct out the 360,000 in interest to find our 540,000 in earning before taxes. Now, when we're finding our taxes, we use this new number of 540,000 to multiply by the 40% tax rate. Remember, that's still up here. And now that we have our taxes, let's deduct that from the prior number to find our net income. Now, same step with preferred dividends. We have 2%. And here, we only have 1 million in the account, so 2% times 1 million. And available to common shareholders, 324,000 minus the 20,000 in preferred dividends. Common shares are 1 million divided by 10. And last but not least, remember this last step, we don't subtract, we divide. $3.04 for our earnings per share for plan three. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. Happy studying.